My name is Jeff Kipps Bolton. I'm the bee advocate. Normally I like to speak about why bees are important to us, why we should be accepting of bees and how they're in trouble and that aspect of it. But today what I want to do is to give you an idea of some of the things which I believe that we can learn from the honeybee. What can we learn from the honeybee? I hear you ask. Well, nobody did ask, but I'm going to tell you anyway. We can learn self-sacrifice, solidarity, cooperation, communication, planning, and commitment. The one which I think most people would be familiar with would be the self-sacrifice of a worker bee when they sting you. Not so, much, not, not, not so much you, but me, because I get stung quite often. And when the worker bee puts its sting in my finger, it's a barbed sting, and the sting will stay in the, in the, st in the skin, and as she pulls away, she leaves the venom sac behind to make it more effective. And she bleeds to death. She literally commits suicide for the sake of the hive, and the hive actually won't, her, won't allow her back in because they know she's already doomed. That, that is self-sacrifice. They exhibit great solidarity. Everybody knows that bees store honey to last them through the winter, but if the winter is too cold or spring comes too late, sometimes they run out of honey. Now, in a human situation, there would be fighting, hoarding, murder, but not so in the beehive. The bees share every last drop of honey until it's all gone. And then they all perish together. That is true solidarity. Cooperation is required when they build their honeycomb. This intricate structure, which most people I think are familiar with, is built from tiny flakes of wax which they excrete, and then the bees gather together to generate heat, and they join all these flakes of wax together to create this structure, and the queen will lay eggs in the honeycomb, the brood is raised in the honeycomb, they store pollen, and nectar and of course honey. Now can you imagine what it takes to build a complicated structure like that with no tools, in the dark, needs cooperation. They communicate in lots of different ways, mostly by chemical. But when the workers are out foraging, if they find a particularly rich source of nectar or pollen, they'll come back to the hive and do a dance. And they do the dance on the face of the comb. And not only does this dance tell the rest of the workers where this, the direction of this source, but also how far away it is and even the abundance that's there. As they do the dance, they, they pause and give a little sample of this nectar to the bees that are gathered round so they know what to look for. Now that, that's good communication. Of course, the storing of honey is a great example of planning. All summer long, spring and summer, they collect nectar and turn it into honey to last them throughout the winter. Which of us can say that we have prepared for our future in such an efficient manner. Last but not least is the commitment. The commitment of the queen. All the queen does is lay eggs. People think of her as the ruler of the hive and she really isn't. She's much more slave than ruler because she lays between 1,500 and 2,000 eggs every day. And that's all she does. The workers that surround her, feed her, clean her, protect her, so that all she can do is to concentrate on the egg, on the egg laying. Once she is no longer producing enough eggs, they'll create a new queen and the other one is discarded and killed. That 
is true commitment. So I think of these six things, self-sacrifice, solidarity, cooperation, communication, planning and commitment, if we were to take away just one or two of those lessons, wouldn't we be better people? I'm Jeff Kipps Bolton, the Bee Advocate. Thank you very much.